Hello everybody, welcome back to more 999, 9 hours, 9 person, 9 doors, part of the Nonary Games Collection. Okay, last time we escaped that room, uh, it was with the, the boxes, crates, sliding, numbers, oh my god, that, that was, that was a, that was a crazy ride last time. But, uh... Let's see where we are in the timeline. Okay, so we're about to head into here. Uh, I think for this decision, I think we might go here. And then we'll jump right back up to here. So we can go through this path. And then do all this. Or come back up here and go through here, then do all that. Uh, but I think we might go down this path. Alright. But we still have some locked stuff, so we gotta come back to here. And for some reason here, because there are locked stuff here. But anyways, uh, let's continue on with Santa with the long hallway, huh? Let's check it out. All right. We've seen this elevator before. We got off the one on the left just a little while ago. Then we went through the number six door, and that took us to the engine room. Yes, and after that we passed through the cargo room. And now we're back here. In other words, we made a loop. We're back where we started. Hmm. We needed a card to get to this point. I don't see a card reader here. Perhaps we aren't able to activate it from this location. Why don't you just try pushing the button? Yeah. Hey, open. It works. That, that, that thing kind of brought The elevator door opened and then eventually shut again. I think so Pushing the button had apparently restored powers to the elevator good now we can go back if we need to What do we do should we return to sea deck? No, this hallway keeps going even if we do end up going back, I think we should see what's down there first. I agree. Let's go. The decision made, Junpei and his companions left the elevator behind and continued down the hallway. Sometime later... Looks like it ends here. Santa, who had been walking in several paces in front of the rest, suddenly stopped. Only one door. They search around it just in case. There isn't anything else. It's the only way to go. It was the door or nothing. All right, let's open it. Jupe took a deep breath, ready himself, then grabbed the doorknob and pulled the door open. There'll be another escape room, right? He paused for a moment, then stepped through into the room. And there he saw the number that had hung over their head since they woken up. Nine. Huh. The nine door. Like the numbers on every other door, this one too was a rough shape name made of red paint. Its door was set into the back wall of the room. <laughs> Jupe leapt towards it with a sunburst of hopeful energy. It was a large double door, heavy and full of some importance. He grabbed the door handle and shook. <sighs> of course it wouldn't be that easy. The red sat on the wall next to the door. Displayed on it. Vacant. Huh. We finally found it. Jubei felt himself overwhelmed with by a torrent of emotion 
At last, they found the exit, but Cole gripped her his heart, and he knew all too well why. As he stood frozen, unsure of what to feel or think. Ch jumpy! Huh? Look! Behind you! He spun around, and he couldn't believe what he saw. What? A nine door. There's another one. Huh. Two nine doors. Does that one also have a, a red? Why? Junpei's voice was barely audible, even to himself. He stumbled towards the second door, as if somehow compelled. And it does. It was a small, single door. It sat in the starboard corner of the room, on the same wall as the door they entered from, but in the option, opposite corner. It's nine, no matter how you look at it. The red is there too, so this is a real one? Jubei shook the door handle pointlessly and muttered to himself. Why? Why the hell are there two doors? It was Santa who answered. <laughs> there were always two doors. There was? I mean, if you think about it, Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, hidden but an, an exit, exit can, can be found. found. It's a seek way out, seek a door. Well, that carries a nine. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Of course, we just assumed that there was only one. After all, why would there be more than one? Oh, man. Ah. He didn't say geez. We fell for it. There are two doors. That means that all nine people who had met at the central staircase could escape. No one would be left behind. Now it makes sense why the bracelets are numbers. One through nine. Well, he, he could have said it. You know, our numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Divided into teams of four and five people. The digital root of both teams ends up being nine. Take one, two, seven, eight, and three, four, five, six, nine, for example. The digital root for both teams would be nine. Or two, three, four, nine, and one, five, six, seven, eight. The digital root is still nine. There are a bunch of combinations that work, and they all end up the same way. If one team has the digital root of nine, so would the other one. What does that mean? The answer's simple. From the very beginning, the Nonary game was designed to save all nine people. But one of them decided to be an idiot and go into the friggin' room by himself, and Snake is missing. But uh, we could have taken uh, the ninth man's uh, bracelet because he was dead, and I think it was just on the floor, like in last episode. Uh, if I'm remembering right, it should be episode twelve that showed off. The ninth, the ninth man's glasses and a bracelet, and then my nope, episode eleven, episode eleven. Well, if we could find Snake, and if he's, if he's dead, we could just take his bracelet, take the ninth man's bracelet, and go through, just like how, basically Clover did, when she took, uh. Aces, Santa's, and June's bracelet cut off their hands and just took the bracelets. Or took both the hand and the bracelet. That's how it was meant to be. Zero didn't lie. He never said there'd be only one nine door. But anyone who'd found themselves in the game would have assumed that was the case. Fights would have broken out. One team would likely betray or deceive the other. Someone might be hurt. Someone might get killed. And there was. 
But eventually, they'd reach this very same room and realize how pointless all their infighting was. There were two doors. There was no need to kill each other. They'd understand and be appalled, overwhelmed with guilt at what they'd done. This game was designed for that purpose. This notary game. We were all arguing and fighting over doors at the beginning. But if there had been one slip up, one tiny mistake that led to more, everything could have been so much worse now. The thought of it sent a chill down his spine. So, what are we going to do, Junpei? A voice broke through Junpei's frantic thoughts. Santa's voice. Uh, oh, right. Hey, keep it together, man. Sorry. Jeez. So what do we do? What do you... We need to think about our next step. Uh... Our numbers are 1, 3, 5, and 6. That's a digital root of 6. The four of us can't open the number 9 door. I thought that that first hand line was by uh, Junpei. It, it, it sounded like him. What do you guys think? The four. Wait. Don't tell me. Yep. There's one combination that'll let three of us open the nine door. That's why I'm asking, what now? What now? It took him no time at all to determine the answer. There was only one combination of three people that would give a digital root of nine. One plus three plus five equals nine. That would mean... No, we gotta go back. That wasn't a possibility he was willing to consider. Santa and Ace agreed. I agree. We cannot leave June behind. June let out a breath. Yeah, a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. Uh, are you sure? I, I don't mind staying. June's body betrayed her true feelings. Her eyes were wet at with beginnings of tears, and her legs shook. It's okay. There's no way we'd leave you behind. Santa had said what Junpei had known the moment he realized which three people could go through the door. Besides, I'd rather drown at the bottom of the ocean than escape with this sausage fest. <laughs> ocean. Maybe I'll get to go to Atlanta. <laughs> Uh, are you sure you don't mean Atlantis? <laughs> Maybe I'll go to Atlanta. Uh huh? Oh, right. God, God dang it, Jupiter. <laughs> you guys. Very well. Best we head back to Sea Deck then. We should be able to take the elevator we passed earlier. Perhaps Clover, Seven, and Lotus will have returned from door one. But even with all seven of us... Standing around here isn't going to accomplish anything, don't you agree? Let's find the other three first, and then search for another solution. I guess you're right. All right, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Come to think of it. What is this room? We were so focused on the doors, we didn't even look around. Huh. Kind of like a church? It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony. But mm -hmm. what kind? We should look around. Huh. A coffin? What on earth is a coffin doing in a place like this? Hey, Junpei! The hell are you doing? Let's move! Junpei, you should, like, tell them. Like, oh, hey, guys, we haven't explored this room. We don't know what's in here. We might be missing something. You know? We should just look around. Right, okay. I'll be right there. And no, no one listens to me. Just like in real life.
Oh. Oh. See? See? What, what, what did I say? What did I say? We should, should just look in, looked around the room just to make sure there was knocking inside that thing. Look, it's Seven and Lotus. We've got a problem. Clover is gone. What? What do you mean, gone? When? Why? How? You two went into door one with Clover, didn't you? Yeah, we went through the door together. But Clover barely spoke to us. She just did her own thing the whole time. Huh. There were four rooms on the other side of door one. She wouldn't let us into the fourth room. She just said, I'll take care of this one. And shut the door. She must have known what was in there. You guys should just force yourself into the room. She must have blocked it with something on the other side. We waited for a while, but Clover didn't come out. We called for her, but she didn't answer. So I kicked down the door and we went into the room. Okay, you, you should did it earlier. But, hmm. It was empty. Clover wasn't there. There was a door on the other wall. Uh, I was about to say maybe she was hiding in there and waiting for you to to like turn it back so she can escape and it was open <sighs> We figure she opened the door and left by herself We ran after her of course, but well, obviously we didn't find her you figured that much out Clover's gone When did this happen? We got here just before you You certainly have excellent timing So you haven't searched anywhere other than near the staircase? No, we haven't. Very well then. We'd best separate and look for Clover. We haven't much time left. Let's begin. Yeah. She's not here. No, she isn't. There's no sign of her. Let's go. All right. I'm thinking we should probably split up. I'll head back to the stairs and take the elevator down to E-Deck. June, you can take the stairs up to B-Deck. All right, that sounds good. But, um... What? Could you stop calling me by that code name when we're alone? Yeah. I want you to say my real name. Say my name. Say my name. <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, sure, right. I, um, I'll, I'll do that. Um. Jumpy. Say my name. <laughs> oh, um, no, it's nothing. All right, I'm going then. Yeah, be careful, Connie. You be careful too, Jumpy. Yeah, got it. Take care. You know, she calls him Jumpy, but his his name is June. Pig. Jump, June, jump, June. Uh. Oh, so uh, pressing X kind of skips the scene. Oh, oh, this is force. This is a force novel section. Okay, tragedy always strikes when one least expects it. But to wait for a man to stand before striking him down seems almost crueler than dealing the fatal blow while he lies on the ground. A light in the dark, June's smile had given him hope, both for escape and possibly for something else. It was that hope that raised his spirits just enough that they might soon be fully dashed. He opened the elevator door, and there she was. A woman sat slouched against the wall. Lotus. Jupe felt his blood turn to ice. Her body was limp, her skin smooth and pale as always. Was covered in bright red blood. 
Jupe felt his chest constrict. He couldn't breathe, and his legs began to shake. A slow, cold drop of sweat trickled down his back. He felt his stomach somersault. Jupe's mind went blank. All his thoughts replaced with endless hissing white. Driven by a little more than instinct, he began to walk towards Lotus, slowly. Each slow movement of his stiff limbs brought him closer to her corpse. Finally, he stood next to her. Robotically, he bent down and put his hand against her neck. There was no pulse, no rise and fall of breathing. She was slightly warm. Something, somewhere, in Jupe's shaken mind, told him that it meant she had been killed recently. Yes, Jupe thought, his mind slowly returning. She had been killed. Someone had killed her. There was a deep cut on her left side of her chest. Blood still oozed from it, although clearly her heart had stopped beating some time ago. The weapon had been a knife then? Perhaps she had been stabbed in the heart once. She would have died immediately. He took little comfort from knowing she must have suffered li very little. Only then did Jupe notice. Lotus's bracelet was gone. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confine of the ship, or the backs of the ground's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shift down automatically. Was that why the killer had ended Lotus's life? So that they might have the number 8 bracelet? If that was true, then the killer was whoever wanted the number 8 bracelet. Or perhaps, more accurately, the person who would gain the most by obtaining the bracelet number 8. Who is that? Who would benefit the most from the number 8 bracelet? The thought had only jumped, just entered Junpei's mind when he heard a noise. A sound like a sharp knife cutting through wet meat. It struck him as strange as strange that the noise came from inside his own body. A moment later, the pain hit him. It wasn't merely pain. There was heat. Extreme heat as well. He felt as though molten iron had been splashed against the side of his body. Finally, his brain made the connection. He had been stabbed. But where? His body was quickly going numb. He couldn't tell where the knife had met his flesh. Given the circumstances, however, he had most likely been stabbed in the back. Whoever had killed Lotus had now done the same to Junpei as well. His voice was little more than a weak groan. With what little strength he had left, Junpei turned his body, trying to catch a glimpse of his attacker. But as he did, the knife dug itself deeper twisting viciously. He collapsed to the floor, a puppet with its strings cut. His arms and legs lay where they fell, oddly twisted and awkwardly positioned. Junpei's body was entirely numb. He could feel the blood leaking out of him, but nothing would move. Nothing save his eyes. As he lay on the floor, 
his life ebbing away, Jupe finally saw his attacker. Two tiny images of the killer reflected in his eyes. With that recognition came nothing. He felt no emotions, no anger, no sadness, not regret. The paralysis that claimed his body had reached his mind. His killer glanced down at his body. Then, without a word, climbed into the elevator and was gone. His eyesight began to fade. The world grew blurry and began to dissolve into an empty white fog. The fog crept into the edges of his mind and worked inexorably inward. Soon, it was swallowed up the last that remained of Junpei's mind and his consciousness left him. There was nothing more. Into other emptiness he fell. Into zero. Wherever Jupe had been was gone. And that was the bad end. Was not expecting that. Well, I guess I gotta go back into another timeline. <laughs>